Welcome to the Boat Show 2022 in New Zealand. This is the Auckland Show. I've come to do some seminars, been invited along by Catch Fishing Tackle. Uh, we've got some seminars twice a day for the next four days. It's going to be pretty epic. It's going to be a big day. turning up today, epic. Good to see a few faces around the crowd. Uh, we'll get into it really. Today we're going to cover off some effective slow pitch jigging techniques. Uh, it's really around the, the learnings we've made in the last couple of years fishing slow pitch jigs in the Hariki. Um, I started, I think you heard earlier, I started fishing in the 90s with soft baits and fished them for many years. I uh, love fishing with soft baits and certainly lures. What I found was tricky though with soft baits is once the wind gets up, you've got a heap of swell, a heap of current, it becomes very tricky fishing soft baits and it becomes less effective. That's where we sort of came across little jigs, um, putting them onto the spin gear and casting into the wind against the current, we, we found we're actually able to fish that really rough sort of um, conditions really well and we could fish, you know, any time of the day and that's where I suppose the slow pitch jigging took off. And for me then I started catching a lot of fish in all sorts of conditions. We sort of started seeing a lot of bigger jigs. We wanted to try bigger jigs in deeper water to see if we could actually get bigger fish, right? And that's pretty much what's been happening. And we're finding that even the big jigs in the shallow water are just as effective, right? So uh, that's a bit of the introduction into what we're gonna cover off. So the agenda, I think first off, we're gonna cover off fish feeding habits. When you think about lure fishing, you think, why we want to talk about fish feeding habits? I think it's important when we're talking about slow pitch jigging, you just sort of get an understanding about how fish feed and why, why slow pitch jigging is important. Uh, why learn it? Yeah, it's going on to why we learned slow pitch jigging and what is it. All right. uh, we get into a bit of uh, equipment, rods and reels, so we do a bit of a demo. All right. uh, I've got a couple of rods here from Catch, We've got a couple of jigs for you guys to have a look at. Uh, we'll go through the SPJ techniques, I think that's important. It gets quite confusing looking at, well, how do you actually do it? You know, so we're gonna look at a couple of the techniques, what they are and how to fish with them. Uh, we will get into so quite a few pictures of what types of jigs there are. It's really confusing when you get out there and start saying, okay, well, what jigs do I buy? There's so many different types. It's, it's understanding which ones do which job. They're all effective. It's just having, having a bit of knowledge as to how they swim and how they work. So, understanding feeding habits, why is that important? I suppose, I did a bit of research as to how fish feed, when do they feed? Um, if you look at aquariums, you know, they, fish, they feed their fish twice a day. All right, so when you think about, well, what, the fish don't feed all day, all right? So when you're starting to look at lure fishing and jig fishing, it's like, well, when do you go out and catch fish? Most people get up in the morning, they go fishing all day and come home and pray, that, pray like anything that they've caught something. Right. When we saw speed jigging in general, when that came to the market, it's such hard work. Right? Everybody gets it out, they, they haven't got speed jigging, they've got a sore arm, they're tired, they've caught nothing and they gave up. And they just put it away and they've gone back to soft baiting. But what we want to cover off with slow pitch is, is, is basically completely different. Right? Bring back that sort of jig, jigging mentality and catching snapper um, and just showing you how effective it is. Right? So feeding habits. Again, it's important understanding what, how fish feed. Um, so fish will, will feed, let's say, twice a day. Now, that's a great question, buddy. We don't know, okay? And that's why slow pitch jigging is important, what we want to cover off today, okay? Slow pitch jigging is actually a fishing technique that enables you to fish all day, okay? <coughs> we don't know when they're going to feed, but if you can fish all day with a jig at any depth, it gives you a great opportunity to catch fish. Okay, and that's, that's the key about slow pitch jigging is the efficiency. Okay. There's a comment that I would sit down and sit with John from Catch and we're just having a conversation about jigs and he often said to me, look, fish feed twice a day. You know, if I'm going out trying to catch kingfish, speed jigging, I'm going to be bugging. You know, so when do you try and catch fish? What is the right time? Well, we don't really know. We know there's a bite time in the morning, there's a bite time in the afternoon. 
you're likely to feed at some point, but we don't know. So as long as you can fish all day really effectively, then you're going to get across that bite time, and you're going to smash them. All right? So that's that's the easy part of slow pitch duty. All right. So now we get into what is slow pitch duty. Now slow pitch jigging is to mimic a dying bait fish. Okay? You can think of any predatory fish that swims in the ocean. You think of a fish that's swimming along, he's swimming vertical, straight up and down. He's just swimming along, happy as Larry. You see it on our world. The little fish swimming next to sharks, they're sweet, they live in harmony. As soon as that fish lays on its side, he's gonna get eaten. Alright, so that's what slow pitch jigging is all about. Okay? You're trying to mimic a dying bait fish. So when you're jigging it up, while it's, while it's on the retrieve, it's not going to get hit. But as soon as that, that lure lays on its side and starts to flutter to the bottom, you know, it's fish instinct to see anything that's falling from above to the sea floor, they're going to get eaten. Okay, it's eat or be eaten, world down there. You show weakness, you're going to get smashed. And that's what slow pitching is all about. Okay, mimicking that dying bait, laying on its side, falling to the sea floor. Okay, then we're going for the next part, it's about, it's about the fall. All right? You can rip these jigs as much as you like, do what you like, but the jigs and the rods are all designed to fall, okay? So it's making sure that you give that jig the time to fall. Because nine times out of ten, while it's falling, if you watch your line, all of a sudden the belly stops. So you'll be jigging and it's going up and down, all of a sudden your belly and the line stays the belly. You think, shit, my jig stopped dropping. Wind the line, boom, you're on a fish, okay? So nine times out of ten, it's going to hit it on the fall. You don't really feel it, okay? But that's when we'll talk a bit more about the rods and real sensitivity right to the fingertip is feeling those little taps and, and everything all right so it's on the fall not the retrieve it's all about the fall with slow pitch jigging okay um, and then to my other point around fishing all day it's about balance and efficiency the rods are light the reels are small you know it's it's actually all about having the ability to sit there from the time you start to the time you finish and still feel really good you're not buddy don't have a sore arm, you're not shattered. It's actually all about the efficiency, okay? So as technology goes on, even we've seen in the last couple of years, the technology's changed so much, okay? Um, I, don't, I don't wanna get too much into the technical stuff, but you'll see just by looking around, it, it's certainly here today, some of the different slow pitch stuff out the back there. It's massive, it's all coming to New Zealand. And that's one thing, slow pitch jigging's been in New Zealand forever. We just didn't know what they were, okay? As we're learning now what each type of jig is and what slow pitch is, we've always had these in the market in New Zealand, we've just never fished with them, right? Um, that's about it, balance and efficiency. Oh, and I think the main thing is what I said before, because it's a dying bait fish, you're gonna, you're gonna catch more species, okay? We were out the other day uh, behind Terry, and we're just dropping it over the sand, there was no sign around, we saw a lot of jack mackerel and stuff around, dropping a 170 gram jig and we're catching jack mackerel. Okay, one after the other. Right, you're catching blue cod, catch gurnard, catching everything. Some of the photos we'll share, you'll see. For us, or for me in particular, I'm gonna really focus on bass and, and the deep sea species this winter. Okay, so we'll get into some of the gear. I'll try and rush this along because I definitely want the Q&A session to go on. So the rods, I always thought, I don't know if you guys know about the spiral guides, but I'll, I would only buy a rod and the spiral guides because they look cool. And that's exactly what I thought. Oh, those are awesome, I want one. But I have never, no idea had spiral guides. A couple of reasons. Guides actually work better from pulling underneath the rod, they're a lot stronger. But secondly, they spiral around because when you're slow pitching, you get a bit of slack in the line. So those of you, when you pitch a jig up, you get slack line and often you get it wrapped around the tip. So if you actually have your guides facing up like a normal overhead rod, nine times out of 10, you get a tip wrap, okay? So by having the guides around the other way, as the light line wraps around the tip, it'll actually slide off, okay? You get a lot less wraps, all right? So that's overhead, particularly for slow pitch, it's around the sensitivity, the trigger grips. You'll find even a lot of the rods expose the rod blank on the trigger as well, just so you can feel that hole. Every little sensitive tap on there, you feel in your finger. It's the same with the reels being small, right? You want to feel everything through that line, all right? When we start fishing deeper water, you'll find some of the masters in slow fish where I see on YouTube and stuff, their rods are so thin, they've got these massive reels, 
they're, they're fishing in five, six hundred meters of water with PE3, like 30 pound line. And we're used to running 80 pound, you know, 100 pound main lines of that sort of depth fishing for hookup. And they're fishing with 30 pounds, okay? They got 400, 500 gram jigs at that depth. So that's what, that's what we want to get into in New Zealand. I think it's going to open up something massive for us. Okay, uh, the rod tips. Think with slow pitch, trust in the rod. You go and buy a specific slow pitch rod like these ones from Catch. You match the jig to the, to the rod, okay? The balance of weight. You'll find once you actually put the jig on the rod, you just, you just feel the balance in it when you start working it. So if you go and get a jig that's too heavy or not made for the rod, <coughs> it doesn't work as effectively, okay? The rods are actually made to catapult, you know, to explain it simply, to catapult these jigs from the seafloor up. So if you think of surf casting, you're ripping that thing out. What you do is load that rod up before your sinker actually even leaves the sand. Once that rod's loaded, all of a sudden your sinker's flying out. That's exactly what you're doing with these, all right? You're dropping them to the seat floor, and when you pitch it, when you're pitching it off the ground, all you're doing is loading the rod up. You're not trying to lift the jig, you load the rod up, and when that rod actually springs back and unloads, it's ripping that jig up off the floor, okay? And that, when it rips up, that's when it starts to flutter, okay? So that takes out all the effort in your shoulder, your back, everything, it's all gone into the rod, okay? So that's why we're going to talk about a bit of the rods and the reels. That's why it's important. You can't use any rod and reel, so don't get me wrong, okay? Gave some jigs to my dad, fished them on the west coast on the charter. Cleaned up. It was just on his general bait rod, but if you want to fish them effectively, you want that balance, okay? Right across the board. Okay, um, that's the reels. Generally, the overhead. I've been casting the micro jigs with spinners, good. But with the overhead, they actually, you want the line vertical. Okay, the vertical for proper slow pitch jigs from anywhere sort of 80 and up to 500 to 1100 grams. You want that line vertical. Okay, jigs. This is an important one I explained earlier about the jigs. The difference between a kingfish jig and a slow pitch jig. Again, I had a friend with me out fishing and we were fishing for kingfish. We had a kingfish pin, saw the sign. I dropped my jig down, I'm jigging away and I'd catch a kingfish. He dropped his jig down, boom, got a big snapper. Well, you know, I've seen it, but very rarely. Next drop, he drops down, boom, big snapper. I'm like, what the heck is this guy doing? Third drop, he caught another snapper. I'm like, all right, what, what the heck is going on here? What sort of jig does he have? So I had a look at it, and that's where I sort of started to understand that the difference between a kingfish jig is end weighted. It's got a lot of weight at the ends, so when you drop it, it drops vertical. With a slow pitch, it's center weighted, all right? Regardless how you throw this in the, in the ocean, when it hits, it's going to fall flat because all the weight is actually in the center. It might be shaped odd, but all the weight's in the middle. So regardless of when that starts falling, it's just gonna fall, fall flat like that, okay? And that's the key. That's when the fish, like I said, remember, a lot of fish swim vertical. As soon as that lays over, you're, you're, you're gonna get hammered, all right? And people are gonna, well, people, fish are gonna see you from everywhere. And that's, we'll get onto a bit about responsive jigs shortly, which is, this is one, and I know some of the, development that John did with his jigs got some interesting stuff to share with you guys. So that's the jigs are oh, also around some of the material they're made out of. Yep, you may not know but there's tungsten, lead, zinc. You might have a hundred gram, you might have a hundred gram boss jig. You can see the profile's quite wide, okay? But then you might get into a hundred gram uh, deep V jig, which is a slim profile. They're the same thing, the same the pitch jig, they have the same, same job, but you can tell with a wider profile that's going to fall slower than the skinny one. You know what I mean? They've got different fall rates, different actions. They're both doing the same thing, but they, they have slightly different. So depending on the conditions, depending on the target of the species you're trying to get, you switch the jig out. Okay, switch the jig out if one wants to, if it's falling faster, then you go to a fluttering jig, get more action. If you're not getting any bite at all, you don't see any sign on the finder, then you want to have a real slow fall, lots of flutter, lots of action. Because fish see them a mile away, okay? A lot of times we're fishing, there's nothing on the finder, all right? We're pitching, and then boom, fish comes out of nowhere. It's like, well, you look at the finder, there was nothing there. So it's weird. The fish see them from a mile out, and they just come and hit them. Okay? That's a bit around the jig design. All right, jig techniques. There's lots of techniques, but 
We've done a bit of research, we've gone through and looked at all the techniques, we've grouped them into sort of, sort of three categories, yeah? Slow pitch. Now, I just want to show you guys slow pitch. This is, for any beginner that wants to do slow pitch jigging, this is the easiest technique and this is how it was all started, okay? It's as simple as, if you've done um, fish with intricus and things like that, it's very similar, but the slow pitch technique that's developed in Japan is, is literally just caught a wind, okay? And you can see as I wind, the rod loads up and flings the jig. So it's when that it flings up and then falls slow. Then you crank it another quarter and it's bang, bang, bang. Okay, so if I drop this down 80 meters, I can quarter wind that pretty much, you know, good 30 meters. I can do that all the way to the boat. There's no stress on me at all. But it's when that, you know, again, after you do that crank and the jig starts fluttering, you get a little bit hit. Okay, so I can do that all day long, literally. Okay, so that's what we call basic generic slow pitch jigging. The next sort of technique, I suppose, as things develop and you want to sort of trigger more wides or you've got different conditions, is another technique called long fall. Okay, long fall starts to incorporate the, the lifting on the rod. There's none of this, oh, hard out stuff, none of that, Jack. Okay, it is literally, you're just lifting the, job, the, the rod as well as a, as a wind, right? The intent is, and by lifting it, is you want to load that rod right up. Remember surf casting? You want to rip out, you're basically doing that in reverse, okay? You load it up, and you let that rod unload on the jig. And that's when it flicks it up, and then it flutters down. So you don't need to let it fall way down, so if you want to fish the column, you just give it a half wind or a quarter wind after you pitch, drop it slowly and just wind it, and let the jig fall. Once it takes up the slack, you do another pitch, okay? So that's long fall. You actually get a longer fall is what it means, all right? So the same with the jigs. These would be a generic slow pitch. When you start talking about long jigs, they're a bit longer, okay? They are more slender. This is what we call a long fall. Something that in that type of shape, okay? Hope that makes sense. Um, and then high pitch. High pitch, I suppose, is a combination of both. But you're, you're literally keeping the jig on the ground. Okay, you're only fishing that bottom two or three meters, and you're just, just combination of a quarter wind and a little lift. And it's just about loading, well, loading that rod up. Jeez, I need to flip that over to Norcross. Okay, does that make sense? So you just got a little quarter wind, little, little rod. Um, and again, I just want to come back to the efficiency type of things. Jump on YouTube, look up slow pitching. Look at some of the Japanese guys that obviously started with this technique. When you see them fishing it, you're like, wow, that's like zen, man. What a zen freaking type of technique that is. It's just so comfy. You see them there, like, man, you could do that all day. Go and watch some of the videos because you'll really buzz out. And that's, that's exactly what it's all about. They develop this technique. You can fish it all day, 500 meters, and still go home sweet eggs. Types of jigs. I don't have a red light on here. So these jigs on the top left, see there's some of the catch range. Just want to talk out the difference between the jigs. These two on the left are what you've talked about today, the deep feed. Again, remember I've seen this in action on the boat, catching lots of snapper at a kingfish spot. So you might find taking a slow pitch out to a kingfish spot you've got, and you drop it down, boom, you'll catch species you didn't even know were there. And I assure you that's happening to us on a daily basis. All right? um, then the boss jig. So I want to talk about this differently. Okay, so a jig like this, you'll see, I don't know if you can see, but come up and see us after. It's got shallow ribs on the side. Part of the design and development John did when they took these on the west coast, and they were actually starting to rip them up. So remember I said this is not a ripping jig technique. But when they actually took these out on the west coast, started, started ripping them, there was no sign on the founder, on, no fish on the finder. But after two or three of the jigs going down and creating the commotion, the fish started to pull up in the sounder. What they found is they basically drift all day, these fish hung with the boat because the jigs going down creating the motion just it created that excitement. And that's what I was saying earlier when we were out in the hierarchy. There was nothing on the finder, and by dropping the pitch down and just ripping it, man, these fish were just coming out of nowhere. And even though we said it was a slow day fishing, we still got, you know, our seven snapper, you know, six snapper between us. And that's a slow day's fishing, but you can't argue with that. These other two on the right hand side, so that's the long drop slider, that's a traditional kingfish jig, but we can use them for slow fish. And that's where I wanted to talk about the, all these types of jigs, 
dual action jigs. You'll actually find it's not traditional center weighted, but it actually is offset and you can use it one way or the other. All right, if you use it one way with all the weight at the bottom, it's more of a kingfish jig. You flip it over with the weight sort of more central towards the top, when it falls, it would have more action. Okay, that's what the dual action means around these, these double trolls, all right? That's what that means. So, uh, the long jump slider, and then these at the side here, pocket rockets. I don't know if you've tried them, but they're a great alternative to soft plates. Okay, so we're casting these out on spin gear, up to 30 grams, one ounce. So you've got a, you know, one ounce, 30 gram rod, and we're ripping them out all over the show. You can cast into the wind, and you get them right down to 26 grams, casting them into the shallows, into the weed, and they're still getting smashed. You know? So those are another awesome jig to have. Do we just, oh, yep. So some of the jigs, I already covered this off really. You talked about the four jigs. They're a bit skinnier, longer, yeah. The responsive jigs are the like the boss jigs, okay? Things that actually make a noise, that have got a lot of color or glow. Things that they'll res fish will respond to other than just the four, yeah? Responsive jigs. And then the real long jig. So remember I was saying these jigs coming out where we can start fishing 300, 400, 500 meters, all right? That's something that's about to land in New Zealand, I can imagine. I have seen some product getting, coming in at the moment. You know, they're getting right up. I saw just this morning a jig on Instagram was two kgs. So they're fishing these on like three, four hundred meters. You know what I mean? Two freaking kgs. And that, I suppose, that's a point to note as well. On a on a generic kingfish jigging rod, you might be able to jig a rod at three hundred grams, but on slow pitch, you can actually slow pitch a jig up to five hundred grams. Okay, because the action is not so brutal and you're putting a lot onto the rod and reel, you can actually use a much heavier jig, okay? So a proper, proper slow jig rod, you'll actually see the difference between speed jig weight and slow jig weight will be written on the rod, so you'll be amazed. Um, yeah, and that's what the long jig's for. You'll see them catching up off and stuff, certainly on my Instagram shortly, next week hopefully. So again, just some pictures really, four jigs. This is Josh here, where I talked about the guy came on my boat, he's catching all the freaking snapper, that's in there. And that's his double trouble. Uh, is a uh, deep V jig, deep V jig again on the side here, and a double trouble up the top there catching amberjacks. So you can see, obviously, they're really the big predators have smashed them. It's another another photo of four jigs. Again, remember the four jigs are the longer ones, the slender. Okay. A long four again, just more examples. Kingies love them. Long four, so again the same snapper all over these things. So that's a 130, 170 gram jigs at 40 meters of water, and they're just getting smoked. They smoked, and the fish are getting. We're catching them mid water too, not on the bottom. You know, they're actually coming up and hammering them. Again, it's the example of the responsive jigs. It's got high glow, high UV, really lots of vibe, lots of noise. Responsive jigs. Another responsive jig again, just a, a, a hybrid type of jig that falls different to the slender jigs. And that was it. Hopefully there's time for Q&A. <coughs> yeah. Oh, great question, brother. I was hoping someone was going to ask that. It's, it's a hard hard thing to answer in a nutshell, but I, I, my preference is light gauge hooks. Um, the jig's falling, we're finding the fish are hitting it in the belly, and if you've got a hook on, on the end where the, where the line's tied, as soon as you set the hook, you're just pulling it out of his mouth. And we dropped heaps of fish, heaps of fish. It wasn't until I put the assist hook on the bottom as well, boom, straight away, double, double hook up, all right? Now there's benefits and concerns to that, which is why I'm stoked you asked that question. We're having four hooks on there. Every fish we're catching is basically bugging. All right. Uh, there was a photo. I don't know if that was in my presentation earlier, but I had a we caught a big snapper the other day, and all four hooks were in that fish. Now that's what they're designed to do. And when the fish grabs it, all those hooks are in them, and you're not going nowhere. You're coming home. Okay. And that's where we're pulling fish out of 40 meters becomes you know quite bad. That we're just going to have to commit to whatever we pull up. We keep. All right. So. Joel Assist would highly recommend to confirm your hookup rig. When you start dropping these down to 300, 400 meters, you want to hook up. You don't want to bite and drop it. You have a long way to wind for nothing. 
So you know, you just need to commit, I suppose, is what I'm saying. We go dual assist, whatever you catch or whatever I catch comes home. If they're big or small, you know, it's usually because they've got four hooks in them. Right? So it's just a decision you guys need to make. There's lots of brands of hooks. Again, I use light gauge uh, on my spin jigs. So when I'm casting the casting these pocket rockets, I'm using a very light gauge hook. What I've found, they come with a light gauge hook if we so when we cast them into the weeds, nine times out of ten, we're actually catching big snapper and big kings on them. All right, and because I'm on, on light spin gear, they're actually taking me to the weeds. So this is where your knots come in. All right, I can actually straighten the hook out, a light gauge hook on these jigs, and get my jig back. So I just had that example the other day where, where a fish got us to the weeds, got me to the weeds, I got my friend to the weeds, and he had tied his differently, he tied his with a, um, was it lefting's loop? And I had my jaw snap with a uni knot. And the union knot on the jewel snap to the assist, I was able to straighten that hook right out of the weeds and I got my jig back and I made busted his off. So again, it's, it's really, you know, it's important. The light gauge hooks, you know, you think, ah, oh, they're going to straighten out and that they're made to, you know? So that's a good question. You know? The jigs come with pretty, pretty heavy gear as they are. And I suppose that's another good point. A lot of manufacturers, if they can sell these jigs with jewel assist, but you get double the cost. Okay, so there's, there's jigs on the market that come with one hook to keep the cost down for people like us, right? There's no harm in when you buy it, putting dual assist on it, right? You, you know about it, well, I doubled the hookup rate, so let's give it a go, and you make your own learnings, really. Right? When you catch that fish, if, if you see the state of it, the hook's in it, you, you call where they use dual assist going for it, yep. I went for the big lentis BKK hooks on some of my jigs, again, caused too much damage. I went down to the C Ranger light gauge dual assist, and I find that way better. Smaller hook, it's just, it's just catching their lip or in their fin or something. Uh, with the big, the bigger hooks, they're actually going right through their belly and stuff, so it's pretty scary. Great question. Blabbed on that for ages. Any more questions from the floor? Getting harsh, dude. All right, so if you have a look on your seats, there is actually a voucher there from Catch, which is where Daniel's going to be. That's at stand 258, yeah. 258. So uh, put your hands together, please. Thank you, Daniel. So, to the yard. Uh,